Okay, we need to get our turret rotating, and that requires a few tests and some code. It's going to take a series of videos to show you how to do this. Uh, the first test we need to do, though, is a point to a line test. So let me show you, first of all, roughly where my game is at. I have my ship up here in the upper left-hand corner. I can drive it down onto the screen. I actually mapped or hacked my left arrow key to stop the ship in the middle. Uh, let's uh, First of all, to rotate a turret, we're going to need a turret. All right, so let's make a turret vector. I'm going to make a float uh, turret length. It's 50, and in future videos you'll see why I'm doing this. I'm going to say vec2 turret. Uh, we'll just point it straight out to the right. Turret length, zero. And then I need to draw it. Notice I took Jim's trick and made an adapter function simply adapts an ugly interface to somewhat prettier one. I just want to say, hey, draw a line using graphics from this point to that point. So, so where, what's the what's the point I want to draw? I want to draw. Let's uh, let me run this again. Bring this on the screen. I want to draw my turret from the center or origin of the ship out wherever it is. Right now, it's pointing straight out to the right. So, in order to do that, I need to take the ship's positional vector, and remember the origin of our game is from the upper left hand corner of the screen, so the ship's position vector, I need to start that vector, start the uh, turret vector at that point, and then draw it to the tip of the turret vector, like so. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of ad addition here to get this to work properly. Okay, so let me shut my game down, go here and let's say uh, G dot draw line from my position to my position plus the turret turret's position like so and I need to pass in graphics as well run that of course it doesn't build this draw line takes what's the problem here from vec2 to float oh <laughs> there we go that's my own global function okay leave that in there here we go. Here's my ship. See the turret hanging off of it? Very good. Now, I'm going to pretend this turret is a full line. Alright, and lines, I'm going to continue. It's a line, it's a line. Lines we can define by uh, a normal to the line. And when I say normal, I'm talking a vector that's perpendicular to the line. And also, I want that vector to be normalized. There you go. Two confusing terms. I have a normal, normalized vector. So what does normalized mean? It means length 1. Hopefully you can solidify that ambiguity into your mind. Normalized is uh, length 1. Normal is perpendicular. Okay, so I want a normal. In fact, let me do the normal in blue. Uh, a normal being length 1 would be 1 pixel. I'm actually going to extend that a little bit so I can actually draw it on the screen. Um, but here's my normalized normal. Well, how could I get that? Well, if I take my turret vector, this white smaller portion here, and I rotate it counterclockwise, or I could, I guess my normal could go this way, but we'll, we'll do the normal on, on the uh, top edge here. If I rotate it this way counterclockwise, and then I normalize it, well, that would give me this vector here. Well, we have functions to do that. We have our perp ccw function. We also have our normalized function. Our, yeah, our normalized function, which will bring this down to 1. See, look, even I can't keep normal and normalized straight. In my now, to calculate the distance of the mouse to the line, it really doesn't matter what my mouse is. If my mouse is here, the distance I'm interested in is this one. Hopefully you realize that ha the perpendicular to the line is the shortest distance to the mouse. If my mouse is right here, I'm interested in this distance. I'm not interested in this distance. That's longer than this. I want the shortest distance from my point or my mouse position to the line. My mouse could be up here, and I want this distance, so on and so forth. Let me erase all this. All right, and we're going to start, or at least we'll just we'll just pick a location. A uh, location I'll pick is right here. So here's my mouse. All right, I need this distance right here. Well, how can I get that? Um. We need a common origin, first of all. So my normalized normal, it has an origin right here. The, ve the turret also has an origin right here. Uh, I need a vector from the mouse, uh, or actually from the ship to the mouse. So the way I do that is I subtract the ship's position from the mouse's, mouse, mouse's position. <laughs> and that'll give me this vector here. Notice now, 
And I'm just going to put an arrow tip on my on my turret vector. Notice all these vectors share a common origin. This is good because now I can understand what dot products are doing a little bit. Oh, I just gave it away. Dot product. All right. I want to. I'm going to call this my source vector. This is my target vector. I want to project this vector onto this vector. If I do that, sound effects don't cost extra. Project this vector onto this vector. That's going to give me this vector, which goes down to the same origin. And if I can find the length of this vector, well, that's the same as the length of this. So that will give me the distance of my mouse to the line. Okay, so now that hopefully you understand that this length is the same as that length, I'm going to get rid of that. Okay, so I'm going to project my source onto my target to get my result vector there. Well, how do I do it? Well, this looks a little bit like a triangle. All right, and if you remember from trigonometry, I'm going to draw a similar triangle here. Not perfect, but similar. This is my hypotenuse. Um, this is my, I'll say this is theta. It's the same angle that's between these two vectors, theta. Okay. And uh, let's see, is this adjacent or opposite? Well, hopefully you remember that since theta is here, this is going to be my adjacent. Okay. Um, and let's go from let's go from there. So if I could get the adjacent uh, cosine theta, here, watch this. Cosine, this should look familiar. Cosine theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So to get the length of the adjacent side, which is what I want, the length of this side, I multiply both sides by the hypotenuse. Just erase that. And I will bring the hypotenuse over here. Okay, so h cosine theta equals the length of the hypotenuse or uh, the adjacent. <laughs> Sorry, wow, say that 20 times. Well, you know what? I can replace this, these these variables here. Instead of saying h here, I'm going to say s. And instead of saying a here, I'm going to say r. So I really want s cosine theta. That will give me the length of r, like so. Okay, good. Erase this. So far, so good. Well, let me bring up another formula you should hopefully know by heart, and at some point in your life you should derive it just so you can feel confident that it is true. I'm going to say uh, s dot t. I know what t is. I know what s is. I don't know r. I'm trying to find r, or at least the length of r. All I care about is the length of it, but if I have to find r to get that length, I will. s dot t is equal to the magnitude of s times the magnitude of t times the cosine of the angle between them. All right, well, this equation looks a little bit like this equation. In fact, uh, this s here is a, a vector, and this r is a vector, and t is a vector, so I should put these vector symbols above these variables. All right, but magnitude of a vector gives a scalar. Magnitude of a vector gives a scalar. Cosine gives a scalar. This all returns a scalar, and you remember the dot product returns a scalar. So. Either way, both sides return a scalar, but the inputs are vectors. Okay. Well, in order to get this equation to look like this equation, I have to get rid of this t. Well, if you remember t, its length is one. We normalized it. So if t is equal to one, that's pretty much multiplying by one, so it's not really buying us anything. So let me put the move the cosine theta over here closer. So if I take s and I dot it with t. And t is normalized, that gives me the magnitude of s times the cosine of theta, which is what I want. I want this this distance, s cosine theta. Right? I really don't care which way the arrow is pointing, and notice, or the vector is pointing, and notice these, these return scalars. They don't return a vector, so they don't give me a direction. I could multiply again by the normalized t vector right here if I wanted to get a direction out of it, but I don't care about the direction, I just care about the distance. So uh, there you go. There's the equation you need to calculate the distance uh, from the mouse to the line turret. So in the next video, I'm going to turn around and put this in the code so you can see it in action.